Hey there tech fans, Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'll show you how you can easily access the graphical user interface on the UHD-44MVW and then use that interface to make whatever changes are needed to both the configuration of the product and its settings. Now you actually have four different ways that you can interact with this matrix, starting with the infrared remote control, which provides a basic level of functionality that allows you to choose the input versus output relationships and actually step through the three different functions that the product provides. If you need more control, you can use the buttons on the front of the unit with the digital display to access some of the configuration settings and make changes as needed. You can also connect it through an RS-232 port on the back to a local computer for even more control, but by far the most expansive control is through that graphical user interface because you'll connect this up to your network, open a web browser, and have access to every configuration step available. Now to do that, you'll start off by directly connecting this to a computer and opening a browser and pointing that browser at IP address 192.168.0.100, and that's the default IP address set on the unit. Once you access that IP address, a web browser will open up a login page that you'll have to enter both a username and a password. The default username is admin with a capital A, and the password is admin, all lowercase. And you can change these later if needed. Once you enter that username and password, you'll have complete access to all of the configuration settings available for the unit. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll actually walk you through each of the pages in the configuration settings and explain what they do and show you the options available. The first tab you'll see is the status tab where you'll find a lot of really important information about the matrix. Here, you can see the model number and current level of firmware the product is running, which is important in case there is an update you'll need to apply. A little further down on the screen, you'll find the current connection details, such as the host name, IP address, and subnet mask, as well as the gateway and MAC address. These can be changed later if needed to match your local network for future access to the product. The next tab down is the input tab, and that will show you the current connection status for all four of the inputs. There is an indicator for each, confirming the connection to a media device for that particular input. On this tab, you can adjust the EDID settings for each device individually to accommodate a wide variety of audio profiles. To do this, you can simply click the arrow next to the input you'd like to change and select a new EDID setting from the drop-down list. You have a choice of adjusting each of these individually or recalling them automatically from a save file by browsing your computer. If you use a particular group of EDID settings regularly, you can also save them as a file on your computer for easy recall later. The Output tab gives you similar control over all four of the output streams. It shows you if you have a monitor connected with a visual indicator. You can also rename each of the outputs on this page to make them easier to remember. The matrix provides automatic resolution adjustment, but allows you to adjust this setting manually if needed. You have additional control over the color space for each individual input and can adjust these by tapping the arrow to the right of the setting and selecting a new option. You can also adjust the HDCP version being applied for copy protection on each of the outputs. The next tab down is the CEC tab which provides complete digital control over the matrix. On this screen, you can easily control the input choices by simply tapping an icon to turn each input on and off as well as control the media playback for that input. On the output section, you can mute the audio as well as enabling and disabling each of the output streams. The video tab allows you to easily switch between video matrix mode, video wall mode, and multi-viewer mode. In video matrix mode, the product allows you to individually direct each input to a specific output. In video wall mode, you have access to the nine pre-programmed monitor display configurations the product provides. You can choose the output pattern that matches your particular video wall setup to start viewing the selected content. Each of these choices will route the chosen input media stream to the connected monitors to create a very specific type of video wall. Finally, in multi-viewer mode, you have 12 choices for how the various inputs are displayed on a single output monitor. You can also adjust the position of these screens and their sizes. The Audio tab provides complete control over the input and output audio options. 
The top section allows you to choose between the original audio from the media stream or embed a new one. The middle section helps you to customize this further by choosing the binding for the audio. If you choose to use the audio matrix option, the bottom section allows you to enable or disable the audio output for each of the monitors. The next tab down is the network tab, which allows you to make adjustments to the login information for the matrix. In the top section, you can change the matrix network address on the LAN and either choose it manually or let DHCP find an open address if your network provides this feature. On the lower section, you can change the login credentials for both the user and admin accounts. This page even allows you to rename the matrix to something custom if you're using the device in a commercial installation. You also have the ability to reset these values to the factory settings if needed. The final tab, which is the System tab, provides expanded control over how the matrix operates and allows you to adjust some basic settings to your needs. You can enable and disable the panel lock, turn the beeping on and off, as well as control how long the LCD display stays on after a period of inactivity. If you're using the RS-232 port to connect, you can change the serial baud rate as needed to match your computer. This is also the screen that you'll use to update firmware later on if needed. You can simply browse for the file on your computer and apply it to the matrix. Finally, this tab allows you to do a complete factory reset of the matrix or reboot it over the network if it needs to be reset. I hope you found this overview of the graphical user interface for the O-Ray UHD-44MVW helpful. That GUI provides access to every possible configuration setting available on the product, and it allows you to make whatever changes are needed to perfectly accommodate your media setup. And the best part is, you can change the default IP address of the unit to match your network and open that GUI anytime in the future you need to make changes. That's it for today, so thanks an awful lot for watching.